Hi everybody! In a previous video, we discussed how feeling faint or passing out is caused by the brain not being properly oxygenated. But contrary to popular belief, most of the fainting done in a corset was not due to suffocation or not getting enough air. Most genuine fainting was rather due to abrupt changes in blood pressure. So if you want to learn more about corsets and blood pressure, I'll put that video right up here. But today we're going to focus specifically on the Victorian fainting culture. Why were there so many stories of women fainting in the past? Why is the swooning lady depicted so often in movies and media today? And why are people claiming that Victorians invented the fainting couch solely for this reason? So let's analyze a few reasons for this. I'm not denying that some women could have genuinely fainted from shortness of breath, but it was probably less common than you think. Those women were probably laced in more tightly than usual for a special event like a dance or a ball. So I'm not claiming that it's exactly common sense that they did this, but it wasn't out of the ordinary for women of wealth to own more than one corset. And sometimes their formal corset would be a smidgen smaller than her day corset to give her a more dramatic or impressive silhouette. And at an evening of more exertion than usual, like hours of dancing and dehydration on top of that, and it wouldn't be surprising to see her go down. But let's not rule out the possibility that women may have fainted from overheating as well. So let's face it, there were a lot of layers back there. When you're wearing a chemise and bloomers and a corset and several petticoats and overskirt and possibly a jacket and a train on top of that and possibly a little hat or a bonnet on top of your head in the middle of summer in Texas and air conditioning won't be invented for another 100 years, you're probably going to feel really hot. And during times of drought, dehydration could have also been an issue at that time, so that would increase the likelihood of passing out. Do realize that dehydration is a common theme here. So like I've said in previous videos, wearing a corset per se may not necessarily contribute to your dehydration, especially a mesh one like this one, which is allowed to breathe and uh, keep you cool. Uh, unless you are wearing one of those latex cinchers that don't allow your skin to breathe and is specifically made to, uh, to make you sweat more that may actually increase your dehydration but regardless whatever type of corset or cincher you're using be careful to stay hydrated and drink enough water because any symptoms you have of dehydration may be exacerbated when you're wearing a corset meaning you might feel it sooner or faster or more intense than if you were out of the corset I noticed that when I started wearing a corset on a regular basis, I was feeling dehydrated faster. Once I actually started getting in my uh, recommended two to three liters of water every day, I was feeling much, much better, both in and out of the corset. I mean, just keeping hydrated is healthy for you in the first place. Victorian women may have also fainted from shock though. Yes, it does happen. I remember when I was a little kid, I was doing some arts and crafts and I accidentally put a staple into my thumb. Uh, I took one look at it and I remember that I immediately developed tunnel vision and my ears started ringing. And according to those around me, the blood just ran out of my face. You know, I went pale and my lips turned blue and I didn't actually collapse on the spot. I never lost consciousness, but I did instinctively lie down in a hurry. And uh, a similar thing happened to me the very first time I tried to put in contact lenses. So neither of these times I was wearing a corset. This was before I became interested in corsets. I'm just relaying some stories to show you that yeah, people actually can faint or swoon from a shock or a new experience. So fainting from shock with or without corsets is a real possibility. And remember that living a relatively sheltered life, a high class Victorian woman was probably not even exposed to say the blood and gore like those living on a farm. Never mind being desensitized to all the shocking news and images and media the way that we are today. You know, news came from newspapers and magazines and word of mouth, not from TV or radio. And even uh, public executions, they were not available everywhere and they were probably not attended by everyone either. So if a very sheltered person were to hear or see something out of the ordinary, uh, something appalling or grotesque, they may have reacted somewhat more dramatically than we would have today. They could very well have fainted, whether intentionally or unintentionally, which leads me to my very last point. Many Victorian women were probably taught to pretend to faint in uncomfortable situations. Remember that it was unbecoming for a proper lady to act up or show anger, lest she be diagnosed with hysteria and hauled away. So what's a woman to do when she wants to quickly become the center of attention at a party? She would faint. Uh, what did she do if she saw somebody annoying and wanted to avoid talking to them? She would probably faint. What would she do if she were angry about certain circumstances, but society says she's not allowed to act up and have a temper tantrum? 
probably faint, and so it goes. So what about those Victorian fainting couches? Many people claim that the chaise longue was actually invented in the Victorian era, but in reality they existed in Egypt and Greece at least 2,000 years prior and as far back as 2,700 years ago. So this illustration right here is taken from a 4th century Roman manuscript featuring that fainting couch or the chaise longue. So unfortunately, taking a two to three millennia old piece of furniture and reinventing it as a fainting couch did nothing more than glorify the fainting culture and help Victorian women look fabulous and be comfortable while they were unconscious or pretending to be unconscious. So while fainting in a corset is not 100% myth, there is actually much more to this wilting Victorian lady depiction than what we're usually taught. There are so many reasons that somebody might faint, whether it's from overexertion, sudden drop in blood pressure, uh, dehydration, overheating, uh, shock and disdain, or even just pretending. There are so many reasons that somebody might faint with or without a corset. So the next time you see somebody at a Ren Faire convention and they're at the corset vendor's kiosk and they're, they're mock swimming for the fun of it and they're falling all over. Be sure to let them know that their melodramatic performance is hardly an original act. I'll see you guys after the weekend for another video. Bye!